Rahela. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to read a five-minute extract from a much lower, longer poem, which was written after I visited Rojava, where there is a women's revolution actually in progress and has been since 2012, and I visited it in 2016. But before I start, I don't know if anybody is going to be thanking Mariam for putting on this amazing event, and I really would like us to uh, give her a round of applause for making... That's 30 seconds out of my time. Uh, but for making this uh, 8th of March so meaningful. So thank you. Okay. I look to a maestro from centuries past to be the porter of my poetic blast, my euphoria for Rojava riding on Omar Khayyam, to my words hold fast. To pin down Rojava in solid verse, so that its women-first world may traverse space, time, and t all ten dimensions to prove laws of the jungle don't rule the universe. This place in northern Syria is at war, all routes in closed except for Fesh Kabor, wayward border post on the blue-brown Tigris. I cross like a refugee steal ashore. The woman worker on the Iraqi side asked why I was going across. I replied to research a book on patriarchy. I hear on the other side it has died. We drive past green fields to Kamish Lo, nodding donkeys, turquoise skies, a quaint tableau a town rising from a pallet of sand, beige browns bronzed by the setting sun's shadow. The landscape unfolds its future and its past. There are no trees by diktat from Assad. Defensive checkpoints outside every town. No malls, no high-rise, no billboards I passed. The oil wells scattered all over the place will make all the riders stay in the race. ISIS, Iran, Turkey, Russia, Saudi, Assad, of course, the world's deadly embrace. USA, Europe, too, has skin in the game. They are dropping bombs on ISIS, they claim. With friends like that, who needs enemies? For in the end, the revolution they'll disclaim. I check my thoughts against the darkening sky. Here I am, I'm ready to prophesy its death before I've seen the miracle birth. Let it take breath to power its first cry. I stay every night in a different home, seeing lives in color, not the monochrome of slogans with women on the cutting edge. Does home life tick to a new metronome? A woman who lost her pregnant daughter and civic co-workers to mindless slaughter by ISIS says proudly her, daughter, her girl's last act signed off a massive tree planting quota. She had a strong case to leave Syria, invited by her brother to Bavaria, but stayed with her doctor's son, wanting to serve, though her loss gives her screaming insomnia. She works at the Women's HQ, Congrea Star. Busy women smile, sit me on a sofa. No one speaks English. I sit in a haze of smoke and voices deepened by Qatar. I feel I'm in a place of fantasy, a rebel hangout from 1970, except these are women, some in fatigues, planning, writing, buzzing with energy. I meet the head of the woman's ministry without an appointment, so casually. In four years, they have passed a raft of laws, literally a ball-busting legacy. Forced marriage and honor killings are banned. Sharia courts, they have agreed to disband. 
while in the UK these courts flourish, a sop to mad Muslim mullahs making a stand. A woman's group finds violence reduced, neither polygamy nor dowries excused. They feel the women carrying guns has helped to give their confidence a massive boost. Although the women's guns are trained on ISIS to shoot holes into their shroud of darkness, they see defense as all-inclusive, a stand against the power of the penis. To grow food, care for forest, water, land, against its rape by capital they stand, and against forced cultural assimilation, this self-defense we need to understand. Peace-loving feminists in the baffled West, this armed struggle they can barely digest. Women's rights at the barrel of a gun, the West's privileged position is manifest. Whatever this door to the future is called, its cooperative spirit had me enthralled. I came a non-believer looking for hope in a bleak moment, must not be mauled. Is this the butterfly that breaks the wheel? Perhaps, if if all it takes is people's zeal to kick a system in the throes of death and centuries of grief and grievance repeal. Hope this poem doesn't outlive Rojava, an upstart threatening capitalist power, could bring hellfire raining down on itself. The rout of Raqqa should not be their last hurrah. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Rahila. Thank you very much. I'll ask you a quick question. Woman Life Freedom was first uh, raised in Rojava. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I just want, I mean, this revolution uh, started in 2012, and I visited it in 2016, and I have been amazed when I came back that very few women, people, political people, feminists had heard about it. I've spoken at a number of Mariam's conferences and people who lived in the Middle East had not heard about this revolution in Rojava. It's across the border from Iran. It's led by Kurdish women. It's really blew me away. And the reason why I'm saying this is that I do believe there is a conspiracy in the media not to cover this issue because as women, we are empowered when we hear about the fact that there are other women who are doing all these amazing things, who are actually tackling capitalism, they're tackling patriarchy, there's, you know, they came from such a low base because it was such a conservative, rural, patriarchal society where there was polygamy and forced marriage and all the other things that I've been talking about. And they believe in education, education, education in order to bring the people with them. And if, and this is why I think it's so connected to the Iranian revolution, not just because they are Kurdish women who are leading it, and it was a Kurdish woman who, who sparked off uh, the, the revolution in Iran. It's about the fact that we will all be empowered and strengthened by it, and perhaps the Iranian women have a model you know, to follow. And I just want to end with, I just heard Gary Young speak about the black, Uh, Lives Matter movement, and he said, there is oil on the ground, and all you need is a spark to make it combustible. And the Iranian women's movement is a spark, and let's make the 21st century the the century of women's revolution. Yes, Thank thank you. Century of women's revolution.